Hi and welcome to the sew along video for the Uptown Apron. So this is a woven garment and to sew it today I'm going to use a plain stitch on a sewing machine. I'm going to use an overlocker to tidy up my edges and I'm also going to use a buttonhole attachment on a plain sewing machine but of course you could always use snaps if you didn't want to use a buttonholer. So um, this is a woven garment so generally with wovens we only need three threads of overlock in our um, three threads of overlock thread in our um, serger, our overlocker but I like the look of four threads so I'm going to tidy up my edges with four threads but you really only need three. So uh, the other thing about this pattern is I've patterned it with one centimeter which is three eighths of an inch seam allowances and it has two centimeter which is three quarter of an inch hem allowances. So um, we'll run through that as we go. Now the other thing when you overlock is we're going to overlock on the very raw edge of our fabric. I'm only going to use my overlocker or serger to just tidy up those um, edges just to snip any, well to slice off any stray threads on the edge. So you don't actually need to cut any fabric off as you go. Now if you didn't want to use an overlocker of course you could just um, do a narrow fold, maybe a 5mm um, near enough to quarter of an inch fold and then fold it again. So you could do a double turn. Um, there's quite a few little bits that go into this but it comes together very fast so we'll just start at the beginning and work our way through. So let's start with the hanger tab piece. Go to your iron and press that in half through the centre lengthwise. Then repress again with the raw edges in the centre. What we're going to do is just fold it in and fold it in again and we're going to stitch on this double edge here. So make sure you've checked your tensions in your machine and it's all set up for a woven fabric and the fabric I'm using today is a linen and then what we're going to do is stitch in from the edge so it's about a pin width um, probably 1 16th of an inch in from the edge so one millimeter it's called an edge stitch and there's no need to back tack we're just going to stitch from side to side okay so pop that piece away somewhere safe now we're going to work on the straps so we have four cut the same, you could cut them as two pairs if you wanted. Um, so we have two that way and two that way, four mirrors. Or you could get, and you'll need to do that if you have um, a fabric with a nap. Or you could just cut four. When you've cut those and they're all ready to go, what we're going to do is take two of them and place them right side together. We're going to sew starting at this straight edge down and around and back up here and we're going to use this edge as a turn position. The seam allowances for this are one centimeter which is three eighths of an inch. You must back tack in the beginning to give that some reinforcing for when we turn it. Now as you come to the pointy end we want to maintain that one centimetre three eighths of an inch seam. So what you need to do is estimate one centimetre three eighths of an inch in from this corner and then stop with the needle down in your work, lift the presser foot, turn and pivot so that this edge here is going to be a straight line and then sew down it leaving that one centimetre seam. Same thing again we're going to stop one centimetre three eighths of an inch estimated from that edge with the needle down in our work. We're going to lift the presser foot turn and pivot and then we're going to do everything in reverse. We're going to come up here and stop and then lift turn and pivot and then sew back up to that straight edge. don't forget to back tack when you reach this end. Now we need to turn this through
Okay, so once you com you're comfortable that that's all turned through properly, go ahead and sew the other strap. So right sides together. Oh, and I forgot to mention there is a notch part way down to help you match this piece together. Right, so now these pieces are going to need top stitching, but we've got other pieces that need top stitching as well. So pop these two away somewhere safely and we'll do all the top stitching together. So now we've got two waist ties to do and you're going to do exactly the same thing as you did for the straps. Take two of them, place them right sides together. Now when we sew these, down each edge you're going to see notches to match together and that's just to help us uh, put them all in the correct position. Now turn them both through. So go to your iron and press your straps, all four of them, nice and flat, making sure when you press that you push that seam really nicely out to the outside and you get your um, points nice and sharp. So the next step is to top stitch around the three edges of these, the two straps and the ties. Now you can edge stitch this at whatever width you want. I'm going to use about five mil, which is quarter of an inch. If you wanted to, you could just edge stitch it at pin width, um, completely up to you, whatever you like the look of. Just remember to start and finish at this opened edge. Right, so once you've top stitched or edge stitched all four, separate them so that you have the correct two together and we'll move on to the pocket. So we have two pocket pieces and then we have two binding pieces for the top of the pocket. Let's start by looking at one of the pockets. So let's look at one of the pockets. The pocket top is shown to us by notches along the top edge. What we're going to do is create pleats and the pleats need to face towards the side of the pocket. So there's a space in the centre where there's no pleats and then you will see a pleat starting here off each side of it. 
So come to one of the pleats on the side. We're going to pick it up. And what I'm going to do is just finger press so I can see the grain line there and pick up that first pleat and put it on top of the second pleat, like so. And what we're looking for is that a nice perpendicular line, so a line at right angles to this top edge. What I'm going to do now is just starting before the pleat, I'm going to, within the seam allowance, which is one centimetre, three eighths of an inch, I'm going to start sewing, just until I've caught that. Now I'm going to leave a gap and I'm going to pick up the second notch, well it's actually the third notch but it's the next notch we see, and find the next notch and pop it on top. I'm going to make sure that this line is nice perpendicular line to there and that the space from here to here is even and if you need to measure it the space from here to here the spaces are two centimeters which is close enough to three quarters of an inch. I'm going to stitch along until I catch the edge of it and then I'm going to find the next pleat here, finger press a nice edge and find the last pleat and making sure that line is nice and perpendicular to the edge so this line here is parallel to this outside I'm going to continue stitching. So what I've done is just create a small line of tack stitches to hold that pleat in place. And now we're going to do the same thing from the um, other side but we want the pleats to face towards the seam. So for this side I'm going to start by stitching a few stitches to secure. Here is my first notch and here is my second notch. I'm going to come to my second notch, I'm going to press that little line, lift it over and place it on the first notch like so checking that perpendicular edge is there and I'm going to stitch through it. Once that's caught I'm going to find the next notch and then the one after it. So I'm going to skip that notch, lift up the, the fourth one and put it on the third one Now I'm going to find the very last one, the sixth one, and put it on the fifth one. Of course that really depends on the way um, you're looking at it, which number they are. Okay, so that is what we want to end up with the pocket top. We want them all held in place and we want to make sure the distances here are all nice and even and that we've got three pleats on either side. All right. So when you've done that, now we can put the binding on top. So the binding piece is going to sew to the top of the pocket and if you've done these pleats correctly it should be precise. The binding piece needs to roll from the back around to the front. I always find it better, it gives a better finish if you stitch it from the front if you're not using a binding um, attachment on your machine. So what I suggest you do, because we're going to, I'll show you how to sew it on like this, we're going to sew it so that, let's get this around the right way, we have right side to wrong side, because we're going to roll it around like this. So what you need to do now is turn up by one centimetre and press that into place. It'll just help give you a nice crisp edge to sew against when we top stitch it. Right, so when you've pressed it, you'll have a nice crisp edge like so. What we want to do is place this pressed edge side down here, right side to wrong side, and we're going to match this here. So the seam allowance we have is one centimetre, and I'm going to stitch, making sure I back tack to secure this, and we're going to line up this typed top edge nice and smoothly as we go. Now I want to make sure these pleats are going to sit nicely so I'm just going to rearrange them as I sew through.
and all I'm doing is just making sure that they're perpendicular, which means right angles. and don't forget to back tack to secure. So what we're going to do now is roll this around to the front and stitch it into place. And when I stitch, I'm going to stitch so I just hide the previous line of stitching. And I'm going to stitch right on the edge. Okay, so when you've done one pocket, go ahead and repeat the other pocket. So I won't videotape that, I'll just go ahead and do it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, once you have your binding on, is go to your iron and turn this under one centimeter, three eighths of an inch, and press it. Now, there really is no need to overlock these three raw edges of the pocket, but if you want to, you could. You could overlock this first, then turn it under one centimeter and press. So once those two pockets edges are pressed, we can move on. Put them away somewhere safely and we'll move on to the body of the garment. All right, so now we need to overlock around the edge of our garment. So we don't need to overlock along the top edge. We need to start from this edge here and go down. Um, it doesn't really matter if you go up here, but we definitely need to go down here and then go all the way around to the same position on the other side, finishing up here. Right, so on the edges I've overlocked, um, I'm going to go now and just press in the hem allowance. So it'll just make life a little bit easier down the track. So I'm actually only going to overlock, um, press up three sides. I'm going to press up the hem by two centimeters, which is three quarters of an inch. And you'll see the turn position is marked by a notch. So this is the bottom edge. I'll turn it up and press it like so. And then on this edge that ends with the, with the um, point, you'll see a notch here as well. And that's at two centimeters, three quarters of an inch. And that will show us this press point as well, two centimeters. And then do the same thing for the other side. So we're going to press three sides at two centimeters, three quarters of an inch. Take your facing piece and on the bottom edge, turn it up and press it by one centimeter, three eighths of an inch. 
if you come to the center on this pressed edge you'll find a notch either side of the center point and this is where we're going to sew our hanger tag so for now we're going to tack stitch it into position take one side of the hanger tag and all you're going to do is place it like this and stitch it directly on top of that notch within the seam allowance so it's a tack stitch to hold it into place and just back tack it to hold it so now I'm going to take the other side of it and tack stitch it to the other notch and then just pop that away somewhere safe and we'll deal with that later okay so let's sew the pocket to the front so take your garment and come to the pocket position Our pocket position is marked by drill holes. Now in the garment industry drill holes are physical holes we put in the fabric and we need to make sure we cover them um, when we sew our garment together. So I've just popped a, a pin in the entry point of the drill hole. So what we do with our pocket is where the drill hole is positioned is one centimeter in and one centimeter down from the finished corner of our pocket. So that means you have to guesstimate a position one centimeter and one centimeter, which is three eighths of an inch. So three eighths of an inch in and three eighths of an inch down. And what you do is you just pop a pin like that in that estimated position. And then that pin needs to go exactly on top of that drill hole. And that is the position for your pocket. So we do that for all four corners of the pocket. So come to this bottom inner edge here. Estimate a position one centimetre, three eighths of an inch in and up. And pop that on top of the drill hole. And then continue doing it for the other side and we'll come to the top and do it up here so now you have that in the correct position and this does have a gape on it it does drape down you need to check that it's all going to sew on nice and straight and smooth. If you need to, you can readjust these positions to suit um, as long as you end up sewing this straight and it's nice and smooth, you'll be fine. So what we're going to do is start at this top corner. Now bear in mind it's a pocket so it is going to need some reinforcing. I'm just going to back tack to start here and then work my way around all the corners until I finish up at this edge here. And I'm going to sew it as an edge stitch. When I get to the corner here I'm going to stop with the needle down in my work. I'm going to lift, turn and pivot and then I'm going to rearrange my work and I'm going to sew in a straight line all the way to the other side. actually going to sew another line of top stitching parallel to the first just to give this pocket extra reinforcing 
but it's entirely up to you if you want to or whether your garment, um, if you feel like the fabric suits that sort of a look. Okay, so I'm not going to um, videotape the other pocket, but just go ahead and repeat that pocket for the other side. So now we're going to work on the pleats and then the front ties. And we need the ties to pop into place because we're going to top stitch the pleats into position. So take your front. And I normally wouldn't do this, but I thought it would be easier to show you. What I've done is, because you never mark your fabric with um, anything other than chalk, but what I've done is I've marked the position of these um, drill holes in, so you can see them a little bit easier. So we've got sets of them. And what we want to do is we want the pleats to face towards the outside of the garment. And in the, the pleat that's closest to the center, we're going to insert the tie that we sewed earlier. So what we're going to do is let's come to this outside edge. So we've got four drill holes here. And if you can't see them, I'll just mark them with the pinhead. What we're going to be doing is picking up these two drill holes, lifting them up and putting them on top of those two drill holes and then we're going to stitch along. Now it's a really good idea to hide the drill holes so when I say fold them we want to make sure we're just past the fold. So we want to pick these up so that we've got the drill holes here on the edge, lift them up and put them on top of the other drill holes. Now before you stitch them just roll them so that that's all hidden. And we want to sew along this edge of the fold, hold it all in place and we're going to start one centimeter three-eighths of an inch before the first hole and finished one centimeter three-eighths of an inch after the second hole. So that's going to give us a seam that's five centimeters a, sorry, a line of stitching that is five centimeters or two inches long. So here you can see the first drill hole here on top of each other and this one here. So we want to start around about here and we want them five centimeters long which is two inches because that's the width of the strap and that's going to make it sit nicely. So remember to back tack and just edge stitch along to about one centimeters three-eighths of an inch past and that's our first pleat into position and now we're going to do exactly the same with the next set so just find those drill holes okay so what we're going to do is exactly the same thing these two are going to go on top of these two So for the next step, we're going to need to find our strap. So same thing, these two, um, these two drill holes that are closest to the center are going to pick up and sew onto these two. And at the same time, we're going to take one of our straps 
and sandwich it in. So what we're going to do is basically just jam that strap in. So um, you want the strap parallel to the drill hole. So if you imagine one cent or you drew an imaginary line one centimeter past this drill hole and then one centimeter up, that's where the top of the strap needs to sit and the bottom of the strap needs to sit one centimeter past. So if you drew an imaginary line from here to here, a parallel line one centimeter three eighths of an inch, eighths of an inch out is where this will sit. So I'll just pin that into position. Now, these two, and sometimes it's easier if you just twist it a bit, these two will create a nice sharp finger press line and I'm going to lift it up and over and we want to stitch it one centimeter in so that's there so as far as it goes this is slightly more of a challenging challenging so than some of the other ones but if you can get this far you're doing really well okay so when you have that into position we're going to stitch and basically we're just going to stitch the width of your strap remember to back tack now this is going to be used to tie so it needs to be reasonably strong and that will just help create shape within your garment so there we go that's going to sit like so Now everything we've done on that side we're now going to do on this side. You probably will find it easier working from the outside first. So here are my drill holes marked into position. So 
So now let's work on the straps. If you come along the top edge, you will see two notches and the straps sit within that notch position. So all you need to do is line up those notches to the outside of your strap and stitch that down as a tack stitch just to hold that in place. And then come further along until you get to the second set of notches and sew the other strap in place. So what we're looking for is all the raw edges even and we're sewing within the seam allowance so just anywhere up to one centimetre, three eighths of an inch. Okay, so now we have that in place we can stitch on the facing. Now generally, generally facings have fuse in them but there's really no need to have fuse. Some people call that interfacing, fusible interfacing. There's really no need to have fuse in this um, unless your fabric is especially light and this apron is just for decorative use. Generally um, aprons are a little bit more substantial made of um, linen or denim or duck or something like that. So what we're going to do now is line up our facing with the top of our garment and you'll find that the notches match as you go along the top. So match this raw edge to the um, overlocked raw edge and we're going to be sewing at one centimetre, three eighths of an inch and we're going to start on the folded ironed pressed edge of the facing piece, the front facing. And we're going to sew up and we're going to stop one centimetre before the end, lift, turn and pivot and rearrange your work. So as we sew across the top we're going to sandwich in the straps. Which is why we tack stitched them into place just to make it a little bit easier on ourselves. the other side do the same thing stop one centimeter three eighths of an inch lift turn and pivot and rearrange your work and when you get to the edge of that fold just back tack and stop and now we're going to turn this through so turn that through and give it a really good press with your iron So I've pressed the facing into place and at the same time I've pressed this remaining side seam which is really the armhole area up by one centimetre three eighths of an inch as well. So what we're going to do is just stitch the facing into place by edge stitching right from the outside fold edge along. And I'm just edge stitching it into place so it's um, wouldn't even be an eighth of an inch, it might be one sixteenth of an inch, it's just, just a tiny edge stitch. Now when you get to the tag position in the centre, don't catch that tag in place, make sure that you stitch it. Make sure you don't stitch these straps by accident as you go. Oh and I should have mentioned this little edge here, I'm just tucking up and just hiding in up here. Just to keep it all nice and tidy.
So let's sew these um, side seams in. Um, I'm going to call them side seams. They're the ones that would run under the arm. So with this one tucked underneath and all those stray threads in, we're going to sew that at one centimetre and start at this edge, right on the edge, three-eighths of an inch. And go right through to this fold seam here. Then go and repeat that for the other one centimetre seam on the other side. Now with regards to hems on most garments, so this is the side seam and this is the hemline. You always sew the sides and then the hem goes up last. So what I'm going to do is sew from the absolute outside of the hem through the overlocking line at two centimetres and two centimetres is three quarters of an inch all the way up. And then go and repeat that for the other side. And now lastly, the very bottom hem at the bottom of the garment. If you remember you can probably still see the small notch through the overlocking so that's the turn position and that is also at two centimeters and two centimeters is three quarters of an inch we're going to sew whoops we're going to sew from the absolute outside edge right the way across So the last thing we need to do now is our buttons and our buttonholes. So with regards to the buttons, it's entirely up to you what size buttons you want to place on this garment. I've put suggested um, stitch points on there. It's basically one and a half centimetres, which is nine sixteenths of an inch in from each edge is the centre. So if you um, can measure that out or estimate a point in that position and then you can just sew on your buttons to suit. And of course your buttonhole will be absolutely dependent on the size of your buttons. So um, I'm probably explaining this wrong but you always sew your buttonholes in first and your buttons on afterwards. Now I'm just going ahead to do this one because I actually have two buttons on this garment we know exactly um, where we're going to be putting them. So the very last thing uh, we need to sew in is the buttonholes. Um, of course you could have sewn these buttonholes before you do the straps but sometimes it's just as easy to do them at the end especially because the straps are long and they're not going to get in the way. So I've marked the position for the start of my buttonhole with a drill hole but of course your um, length of your buttonhole is going to be entirely dependent on the button you choose. So um, when you're ready go ahead and buttonhole these and, uh, and the other thing is you could of course um, put snaps onto this if you prefer. So when you're ready choose the correct setting and uh, start. Thank you. 
So when you've done your buttonholes on this side, and bear in mind this is just suggested buttonhole position, as long as you have one at the beginning point, you can space these out however you prefer, and make sure you do it on both end of the um, straps. So go ahead and stitch the buttonholes on the other side and cut them open, and your garment is finished. So thanks for joining me with this sew along video. I hope you enjoy the garment and I look forward to you joining me again soon for my next sew along video and don't forget to go on Facebook and join my pattern discussion group which is Trish Newbury Design Pattern Discussion Group. See you again soon.